वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नीता रानी फैकल्टी टाटा इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ सोशल साइंसेस हैदराबाद द मॉड्यूल दैट आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस टुडे इज गांधी नेहरू एंड अंबेडकर ऑन वेमेन मोहनदास करमचंद गांधी जवाहरलाल नेहरू एंड भीमराव रामजी अंबेडकर वे द थ्री प्रोमिनेंट पर्सन हु लिव ड्यूरिंग द सेम पीरियड प्लेइंग अ सिग्निफिकेंट रोल इन मॉडर्न इंडिया सोशल एंड पोलिटिकल रेल्स at yet at the same time their views were different from each other and were influenced by the social backgrounds they belonged to this unit tries to understand these three persons views on women and their potential as an agent of resistance to tradition and exploitation gandhi was the unsurpassed leader of the indian freedom movement he believed in non-violent civil disobedience led india to independence and inspired movements for civil rights and freedom across the world jawaharlal nehru was the first prime minister of india and a towering figure in indian politics he emerged as the paramount leader of the indian independence movement under the guidance of gandhi he was the prime minister of india from its establishment as an independent nation in 1947 until his death in office in 1964 He is regarded as the architect of the modern Indian nation state. Now, Ambedkar was an Indian jurist, economist, politician and social reformer who cam- campaigned against social discrimination against untouchables, women and laborers. He was also India's first law minister and the principal architect of the Constitution of India. Before getting into the details as to what were the ideologies of these three prominent men, It is important to have a glance at the women's status at that point of time or in other words in pre-independent India. In the name of tradition, faith and custom, a whole set of social flaws revolved around men, women. The patriarchal nature of society confined women to the households, making them invisible in the public space and inferior to their male counterparts. Men were considered as the natural guardian and custodian of women. It was at such a social juncture that Gandhi, Nehru and Ambedkar identified women as prospective agents who had an identity and independence of their own. Now let's see what are the views of Gandhi on women. Gandhi's views on women were different from that of the 19th century's social reformers. The social reformers of the previous century like Raja Ram Mohan Roy, Vidya Sagar and Jyotiba Phule recognized the flaws that existed in the society endorsed by religion. They realized that the essentiality to reform the situation was resort to education. But all the social reformers remained within the framework of male agenda which saw the emancipation of women through the protection and benevolence of men and also through the support of the colonial government as part of this undertaking 19th century witnessed three major legislations illegalizing sati infanticide and also legalizing widow remarriage but with the entry of gandhi in indian politics circumstances took a different turn The major innovative addition which Gandhi launched was the insertion of the mass into the freedom movement. He included peasants and laborers into the wave of national rising. Simultaneously, he recognized the importance of women who could play an equally important role in the freedom movement. This was a major shift from the strategy of the early nationalists of the 19th century. Thus, women from their private space were brought to the public space as potential agents capable to voice their needs and demands shoulder to shoulder with men in a society still chained with uh, shackles of tradition this was a bold and audacious step nevertheless gandhi's strategy was more tactical in the case of women wherein he never rejected the religion but gave symbolic icons to his cause by choosing women characters from hindu mythology and represented them to both indian men and women by idolizing these women figures and these were three and these three women figures were sita damyanti and draupadi they were the three ideals of indian womanhood that gandhi rep- repeatedly invoked as inspirations for the downtrodden women of india He regarded Sita, Damayanti and Draupadi as the owners of superior moral courage and independence. They were not abalas but they were sabalas. 
But when one looks at the stories of these three women uh, in the mythological text, one finds that they were women who suffered the dominance of men in the society, suffered a repressive social system and succumbed to it. For example, Sita rejected this unjust world and vanished in the split earth. Draupadi was married to Arjuna in the Swayamvar and accepted his four brothers as co-husbands against her wish. And this was a case of fraternal polyandry. Damayanti fought for her beloved or Nala and succeeded. But none of these women fought against the oppressive social system. It is surprising that Gandhi chose these women as personification of willpower to inspire the women of India. Gandhi wrote and spoke about a lot of issues concerning women uh, like equality of sexes, marriage, parda, dowry system, widow remarriage, divorce, education, birth control and women's honour. He asserted that the rules of social conduct assigned on each gender were fixed by man and not woman. Gandhi was the first to identify the capability of a woman whose energy and labour could be utilised for the better treatment of humanity and also importantly for the benefit of Indian society. Gandhi said, I have long before come to the conclusion that unless women of India work side by side with men, there is no salvation for India, salvation in more sense than one. I mean political salvation in the greater sense and I mean the economic salvation and spiritual salvation. Gandhi asserted that women have a significant role than men to play in the attainment of Swaraj and nation building. By declaring this significant role, he bestowed a key role on women in the freedom struggle. The active participation and mediation of women were utilized to bring many other sections of women into the movement against the British rule. Gandhi declared women as economically and politically active elements of the society without whose support freedom was senseless and unwinnable. Thus, by placing women as a central focus, he bestowed an economic and social objective for their participation. He was also in favour of the alleviation of poverty and unemployment of rural women. Gandhi's thoughts showed the essentiality of women's energy for the process of nation building as equal partners and leaders. He also asserted that votes of women have equal legal status. He professed that the imperfections depicted in the Shastras should be removed by women. He argued that women were gifted with equal mental capacities and therefore she had equal rights. However, due to fear, helplessness and custom, ignorant and worthless men had been enjoying control over women. Gandhi can be considered as the person who initially identified the worth of women as equal partners of men. With this identification, he highlighted the notion of gender equality, which was a much advanced thought at that point of time. No other person in the entire history of India have commented and written on various issues affecting women like Gandhi. He was against the custom of child marriage. He connected this flow to the larger issues of social and national health. He advocated widow remarriage and declared the increasing number of child widows as a negative force curbing the progress of the society. These were the opinions or perspective of Gandhi on women and we saw that Gandhi had actually uh, widely touched various aspects relating to women. Now, we will be shifting to another important personality of the same time period, Jawaharlal Nehru. Now, let us see what Jawaharlal Nehru has to talk about or has what is his perspective on women and related issues. Nehru gave immense stress on the advancement of women in the society. He firmly believed that the parameter for the examination of progress of a civilization was to see how it treats its women. He considered illiteracy, parda system, early marriage and untouchability as the causes of women's subordination. An innovative part of Nehru's ideology on women was that he emphasized the rights of women as an individual with an identity of her own. He viewed them as proficient individuals without affixing them to any collective identity like family, community and caste. Another new aspect which he highlighted was the pathetic economic condition of women. 
Thus, he found it at most necessary to give equal opportunity and equal privilege to them before the goal of an independent nation was achieved. By 1937, after the Brussels Congress, Nehru announced that women should be treated on an equal footing with men economically, industrially and educationally. In his mission for the empowerment of women, Nehru utilized three major instruments constitution, legislation for the protection of women and educational opportunities. So basically constitution, legislation and education. Part 3 of the Constitution of India on fundamental rights guarantees to men and women equally various freedom, equality before law and opportunity for employment or office under the state and forbids discrimination on the grounds only of religion, race, caste, sex, descent, place of birth or residence. Nehru's initiative to launch legislations to improve women's rights through Hindu Code Bill did not materialize into reality. Drafted by Ambedkar, it tried to address the problems faced by women of the majority community. The bill was met with opposition and was withdrawn. Nehru had to surrender to the mounting resistance and the modified version of the bill was passed which came as six different legislations concerning various issues on women. All these legislations improved women's legal status but the truth was that it did not bring within its fold those women belonging to other religions. It also did nothing in raising her to an equal status with men. Ambedkar was deeply dissatisfied with the whole set of developments and he resigned from the ministry to demonstrate his disagreement. Nehru rebuked the mindset of the general public towards prostitution. He believed that the status of these women could be advanced by helping them find or provide them with honorable means of employment. Dowry system was condemned as a social menace. Nehru was a defender of women's education. He said, I have always been strongly of the opinion that while it may be possible to neglect men's education, it is not possible or desirable to neglect women's education. He recognized education as a major step towards gender equality. He stated that for a nation to have sensible children, it was necessary that the mother was educated as it is the mother who plays a major and influential role in the formative years of a child. A mother who is well trained in many aspects was a precondition for the upbringing of a child. Thus, it was utmost important that women were educated. Nehru underlined the fact that India would never be able to rise if half the nation was ignorant and uneducated. He added, if you educate a man, you educate an individual. However, if you educate a woman, you educate a whole family. Women empowered means Mother India empowered. He identified the capability of women as potential voters and there was an actual increase in the polling rate of women than men during his period. Nehru admitted that the existing laws and customs put many restrictions on women. He believed in the efficacy of legislation which can alter their conditions. Nehru added that there existed different kinds of perspectives on Indian women. One perspective visualized Indian women as a symbol of purity, faithfulness, submission and devotion to her husband. He considered this as a typical Indian viewpoint. The other stream of thought especially maintained in some western countries viewed Indian women as backward and suppressed chattels. Nevertheless, Nehru rem reminded that the about two streams of thought were not realistic. They were imaginary with little connection to the actuality. He believed that it was very difficult to form a truly objective picture of the situation, yet generalizations regarding Indian women's life existed. Nehru believed that though women have played their part in every branch of national activity, it was their unobstructive work in the household, in the village or in the largest community that has moulded the nation. He also wanted the preservation of the feminine nature of women. It is surprising to see that Nehru, in spite of accepting that women played a role in all spheres of life, gave more credit to her as gave more credit to her part as a homemaker to be more influential in moulding the nation. He stated that femininity was to be retained. 
what he meant by femininity is more clear when he says that a woman's qualities are transmuted and expressed as feminine virtues of gentleness tenderness patient resignation and a quiet and amazing courage of passive nature um, writing forward to women of india in 1958 he added that though a generalization of an image of women should not be done the idea of women in india was chiefly connected with these feminine virtues nehru remarked that the greatest revolution in a country was the one that affected the status and living condition of its women in india's case the revolution had affected the women at a minimal level india witnessed changes which had a pattern of amalgamating change with continuity without being aggressive um, as we can see nehru accepted that it was gandhi who succeeded in bringing an aggressive change whereby women came out from their private space to play their part in the struggle for india's freedom it is surprising that even after accepting a uh, larger part of women's role in nation building and championing women's education nehru still doubted whether education would be able to erode the essential characteristics of indian women nehru's championship of for the cause of uh, women fluctuated though he accepted that women had played a part in the social life and history of india one finds a major shift in nehru's attitude towards the later phase of his nationalist nationalistic politics uh, or his career on the issues concerning women he failed to perceive women's issues in the same way as was perceived by gandhi his mentor though nehru criticized prostitution the suppression of immoral traffic act of 1961 however did not reflect any notion of gender equality punishment was not imposed for the clients of the prostitutes instead penalty was prescribed on those who organized the traffic and who lived on income from prostitution nevertheless uh, nehru identified the essentiality of getting women educated and supported education for them now as of now we saw gandhi's and nehru's uh, views on women now we we take our attention to another contemporary ambedkar and how he also had his own um, uh, unique perspective on this uh, gender issue now let's see what are the similarities and what are the dissimilarities and how they differed how he differed from the uh, fos um, gandhi or and nehru ambedkar was another prominent figure of the times who tried to improve the social status of women in the indian society he analyzed the lower position of women within the hindu social structure and social order he was dismayed at the inferior status which women enjoyed in this hierarchical structure as a first step towards creation of awareness he extensively wrote cha challenging the established idea on women relationship between man and women endorsed by hindu religious texts and practiced in the name of custom and tradition one finds that gandhi nehru and ambedkar identified the inequality and injustice deep rooted in the hindu society that institutionalized hierarchy in an elaborate manner ambedkar like gandhi questioned norms by which relation between man and women were established for the benefit of men he called it artificially constructed gender relations this gender relation led to the stereotyping of the behavior of women and any defiance on this was of this was scandalizing he demonstrated how the subordinate position of women was supported by hindu scriptures especially the manusmriti women were observed as nothing but instruments to manage household matters poverty illiteracy and lack of health were other conditions associated with them ambedkar presented various women empowerment programs which tried to bring the women out from their decadent social structure which otherwise did not guarantee them a dignified living like nehru ambedkar believed that the progress which a society had achieved could be detected by measuring the progress that women had achieved in that society he viewed women's rights as part of promotion of social justice in the society by bringing women into the framework of social justice ambedkar raised women as a group who were eligible to enjoy the privileges of liberty equality and fraternity 
Thus, it can be stated that Ambedkar was a social and political thinker and also a social reformer who created awareness about gender inequality inherent in the Hindu social order. His analysis of women's issues was seminal in the formation of contemporary feminist discourse. He stated that in the days before the Shastras were written, women occupied a very high position in the society. They were entitled to education, but with the passage of time, Situations altered as a result of the restrictions imposed at Manusmriti. Ambedkar did an analytical study of caste system in India, tracing its origin, operation, spread and its negative consequences on gender relations in Hindu society. He concluded that caste system divided the population of India into different fixed compartments, preventing social intercourse between each compartment. The system of endogamy further consolidated the members of each compartment into one. In other words, preference of endogamy or exogamy sustained various caste groups. Ambedkar traced how various social practices entered the society, leading to child marriage and early widowhood and thus to the ultimate deterioration of the status of women. He asserted that caste system and other rituals and customs linked to it was responsible for this decline in the status of women. Ambedkar's reformative approach for the women's cause was also different from the previous social reformers of the 19th century. His approach also differed from Gandhi. There is no doubt about the fact that all these reformers and Gandhi identified the pathetic condition of women and tried to change their lot by their various plans of analysis and action. But none of them ever mentioned about the termination of this hierarchical social order. Their plan of empowerment schemes, empowerment schemes focused on the plight of the women by confining them within the hierarchical caste structure. Ambedkar laid down a new plan whereby he visualized the analyzation of caste which would eliminate the religious notions upon which caste is founded. He believed that when these notions were demolished, women were free from the clutches of custom and tradition of her status and her status automatically rises. All through his life, he challenged the ideological foundation and operational mechanism of caste system that denied equality, freedom and a dignified life for women. In his seminal work, Annihilation of Caste, he announced a gigantic task of reconstructing the society sans caste system. He asserted that the new society should be based on modern democratic ideas of liberty, equality and fraternity. His attack on caste system was at two levels. One, ideological. Two, operational mechanism. The ideological basis of caste system was the, way, uh, was the various Shastras and Smritis. Thus, he, he gave a call to burn the Manusmriti, the prominent doctrine among the texts. He asked the people to clean their minds off the atrocious ideas mentioned in it. The burning of copies of Manusmriti on December 25th, 1927 was a culmination of this agenda. Ambedkar's second level of attack was on the operational mechanism of caste system. He believed that interdining and intercaste marriages were of no effect as long as the religious notions based on caste existed. Gandhi did not want to eradicate caste system as he believed it to be a division of labor and wanted it, it to be reformed on perfect model. Ambedkar severely condemned Gandhi for this viewpoint. Ambedkar's attitude and approach towards women's cause were radical and liberal. He championed women's education and declared that education was the medium through which she could break the shackles of her subjugation. He wrote articles on the need of women's liberation and gender equality. He also included women in public activities and demanded socio-economic and political rights for the depressed classes and women. Thousands of women marched with men to the Chandwar tank under the leadership of Ambedkar initiating a liberation movement of the depressed classes to restore uh, dignity to them. He raised women's issues in the Bombay Legislative Council and supported the Maternity Benefit Bill for the betterment of women's laborers. A women's association was formed in 1928 at Bombay under his initiative. 
A separate conference for women was also convened at Nagpur in 1930. Women actively participated in these conferences. Another major development where women demonstrated their so strong presence was the Kalaram Temple Entry Movement in 1930. Many women courted arrest along with men and, and were imprisoned. Women by now had started mobilizing themselves and vigorously articulated their opposition to the upper caste hegemony. Ambedkar opposed worshipping Hindu deities and asked women to ultimately free themselves from inhumane customs, rituals and superstitions and made the way for their liberation. As India's first law minister, Ambedkar tried to codify and reform the existing Hindu laws and introduce Hindu court bill in the parliament in 1951. This bill actually tried to address various issues faced by women and guaranteed rights to women. But the bill met with stiff resistance from the orthodox Hindu section, conservative Hindu politicians, Hindu organizations and people. Finally, the Nehru ministry had to withdraw it and reintroduce and pass the bill as Hindu Marriage Act, Hindu Succession Act, Hindu Minority and Guardianship Act and Hindu Adoptions and Maintenance Act. Ambedkar was greatly disappointed with the apathy of the government and resigned from the cabinet. So in conclusion, uh, we can say that empowerment of women is an issue which is tightly tied to the tightly tied to challenging the age-old traditions and customs. It was a very bold venture by Gandhi, Nehru and Ambedkar to think ahead of their times to create awareness among the people of India and make them realize the gravity of the problem if one section of India's population endured subjugation at the hands of the other section male. Three of them differed in their ideology and differed in their method of women empowerment programs. Nevertheless, the spark which they ignited has, long, has gone a long way in fashioning the feminist discourses and movements in India. Though Gandhi, Nehru and Ambedkar had their own divergent opinions in their understanding of women's issues, the revolutionizing thought which they initiated with regard to women are still significant. Thus, uh, we saw Gandhi, Nehru and Ambedkar's view on women. We saw that Gandhi brought women from the invisible domestic space to the public sphere and he, he identified the potential of women. Nehru also identified the potential of women and he had certain tools by which their position could be, uh, their position could be emancipated. But whereas uh, Ambedkar, we see that Ambedkar believed that the caste structure is responsible for the deteriorating condition of women. Thus, when Gandhi and Nehru discussed the issue of women by remaining themselves within the framework of caste system, Ambedkar comes out of this frame and discusses a, a betterment of women's condition by demolishing caste system. So this is something which we will not find in uh, Ambedkar, sorry, uh, Gandhi's or Nehru's perception on women. Thank you.